Okay, so we're done with our free body diagrams. What would be a good next task? Next, we should break each force into components. Who do we need to break into components? Well, the um, the A. A. Which of the forces do we have to break into components? Gravity. Yeah, only the weight. The weight is the only thing we have to break into components because the other forces are all already parallel to one of the axes. That was the whole reason that we chose these axes, so we could break as few things as possible into components. So the only thing that we have to break into components here is the weight. Well, this is a good thing for us to be practicing. Um, so we want to draw our triangle. You can draw it either above or below, below the line. Can we do it above or below the line? Whatever you like. Below. So that would be over here. Remember to make the legs parallel to the axes. So don't draw a triangle with horizontal and vertical legs. Draw a triangle where the legs are parallel to our axes. Wouldn't it be easier to just go straight across? You mean like this? Like uh, that, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, I, 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 thought, when you said below, I thought you meant this. But either of these is fine. So yeah. So we can. Then it would be easier for. Then the angle's a little bit easier. That's right. Good. So uh, then, what angles do we know? What's this angle? 60. And what's this angle? 40. All right. And we should focus maybe on this angle, because this matches the number that we were given. So I'll focus on this angle down here. Although you could just as well use the 50 if you're careful about it. All right. So uh, here's our weight. All right. So uh, how do we calculate Wx? So I'll calculate that. Cosine of 40, not 20. Yes. 22? Mm. Yes, 22. Is that going to be positive or negative? Negative, because the x component of the weight is trying to pull us down the plane, but our positive direction is up the plane. So let's get into the habit of putting in the signs as early as possible. By the way, I can see here I made a mistake. I said the overall weight was negative, but overall vectors don't have signs. This is not negative. This would be negative if we were still using vertical axes. But with these axes, there's no, there's no meaning to putting a sign in here. Only vector components get signs. Only vectors that are parallel or anti-parallel to an axis. Well, now we can do wy. Well, that would be 29.4. This side is adjacent to the 40. Whoops. No, we're doing it. Oh, um. It's opposite. Well, they're both adjacent to the 40. Because uh. <laughs> the previous no, one was supposed to be sine. Yeah. I messed up. <laughs> so this should have been sine because this is opposite to the 40. That was 18.89, so 18.9. So All right, and here's where I should have used the cosine. So that would be 22. Mm -hmm. It's negative 20. Down. And this would be, let's see, negative? C. Mm -hmm. Because the y component is pointing uh, into, the, into the plane away from this. So both of these components are pointing in the negative directions. All right, so this side is the adjacent side. So here's where we use the cosine. OK. Anything else we have to break into components? No. Oh, so then what? That's it. Now we will use the second law. Separately for OK. So how many equations is that going to give us? Three, two, three. Yeah. We got an x and a y component for object A, and only a y component for object B.
So here's our three equations. What should I write down on the left-hand side of this equation? Net force xA. 2 minus 0.2. So what are our x components here? We have the weight, which is negative 18.9. What do we have to include besides the weight? Mu kn and t1. Yeah, so we have the tension. What should be the sign on the tension? Oh, this tension is going to be positive. And minus the friction. Minus friction. If we use this for the magnitude, then we would be subtracting that for the friction. Good. And on the right-hand side, what do we plug in? 3a. Now I'm going to start using this for the magnitude of the acceleration. Are these two things going to have the same acceleration in magnitude? Yes, magnitude, yes. Yeah, so I can start using this for magnitudes. Uh, what's going to be the sign on this acceleration? Positive. Positive. So I'll put that in. All right. Now somebody was already suggesting that there is a way to get rid of one of these variables that maybe we should have used already. How did we, we already used a special formula for the weight. Well, we probably should have already used a special formula for the friction as well. That would get rid of this unknown. Or actually, uh, maybe, uh, maybe we'll hold off on that because we're, we don't know what the normal force is yet. So we actually, excuse me, we can't actually calculate the friction yet. All right. Um, so uh, this has a bunch of unknowns. Well, what do you do if you have a bunch of unknowns still? You just write a different Newton's second law. So here we have net force y. What should I list as net force y forces? What are some of the y forces for object A? Y forces would be normal the normal force and the weight. And we know the y component of the weight is negative 22.5. And what do I write down on the right-hand side of the equation here, the y component for the? We know the mass. Mm -hmm. Which is 3. Mm -hmm. So we don't even care about the mass. Because this object is not going to be moving in the y component. We know it's not going to plunge into the inclined plane or levitate off the inclined plane from our common sense. Motionless in the y component means this is zero. We probably should have done this equation first. Because this is an equation we can solve on its own. Part of the judgment you want to develop is which equation is most useful to start with. Well, this would have been useful to start with. This tells us the normal force is 22.5 newtons. How does that help us with this equation here? Now we can go back and figure out the friction. So we didn't really have, haven't really talked about this, but you've already, it looks like, learned the idea that the formula for friction is mu k times the normal force. I'm going to put a bunch of dots in here because this formula just tells you the magnitude of the friction. We already know how to figure out the sign of the friction. We know that the friction will be opposing the sliding. So we can figure out the sign on our own. This formula just gives us the magnitude. All right, well, let's go ahead and work that out here. Here, in this case, mu is 0.2. And our normal force is 22.5. And in this formula, we'd already decided it's that this friction would be negative. Maybe if you wanted to, you could solve this now for t. My inclination here would be to say, so far I d this has one equation and two unknowns. So we, where are we going to get our third equation from? Do another, Newton's Do another Newton second law. Well, fortunately, we have one more Newton second law that we haven't used. What should I list for the net forces for b in the y component? Tension and weight. Positive tension and minus 294, we figured out is the weight. And on the right-hand side, we can write 30. And again, this is the step that you need to highlight. This is the step that most students are likely to forget, putting in the negative sign on this acceleration here. A lot of people would say, oh, they're connected, so they have the same acceleration. And I'll just write an A here and an A here. Well, you could write an A dot here and an A dot here, because it's the magnitudes that are the same, and it's our job to put in the right signs. 
All right, and now we just have um, the typical algebra. So I'll solve this for tension, and this becomes 294 minus 30A. And then we can plug that in over here. 